Hey there, friends. It looks like I'm live, but I'm going to uh, just wait while uh, the delay comes forward or, you know, goes through and I can verify here and just make sure I also have everything. Um, oh, there I am. Perfect. So make sure I have everything turned off. Hey there, Oops, get that turned off so we don't have any bad muting. See, we have quite a few people waiting. So thanks for joining me today. I'm excited to hang out with you guys. All right, let me get this up on my phone so that when I get this camera flipped around, I will see your comments as much as possible. All right, friends. Well, it has been a while since um, I have been live. I think it's been a couple of weeks. I'm happy to be back. Um, I'm sure that um, I don't, I just lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was saying. Uh, I'm just, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be creating live with you guys again today. Um, so a couple of things I'm going to go over real quick. My husband is on the way home and we are expecting a delivery. So there might be a little bit of chaos in my world um, here in a little bit. My husband is going to do everything he can to uh, make it go as smooth as possible. But just in case if you hear my dogs or if there is some stuff going on around, that's what it is. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I didn't really. It's in desperate need of, of um, some love, but thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so there's that. So just if it gets a little loud in here, I apologize. We're going to do our best to um, keep the uh, chaos to a minimum. <laughs> um, and then, of course, before we get this flipped around and we get going today on my card, uh, let's just go over a couple things. First, if you're new, let us know in the comments. We love to welcome you. Once I get this flipped around, I don't see as many comments, but Heather is uh, my partner in crime. She is posting on her, under Pink Fire Studio. She's in the comments. So she misses pretty, or she catches pretty much everything that I miss. Um, but if we both miss it, welcome. We're happy you're here. We're so glad that you found us. And we hope that you will continue to come hang out with us each week. Oh, thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. And then um, if you could do us a couple of favors. First off, if you guys could give this video a thumbs up, we would really, really appreciate it. It helps the reach of the video right now and on the replay. So that's super helpful to us. So we really appreciate when you guys do that. Um, and secondly, um, if uh, we give away a $15 gift card code at the end of every live. So all you have to do is what you're do doing now, chat um, in the live chat. Um, but also there's a little arrow button that says share next to it. So if you click on that arrow button and hit share, you can share it with a friend via email. You can share it on your Facebook page. You can share it into a Facebook group as long as it's allowed just to get the video out there a little bit more. And then um, come back here and let us know you shared. And then that is an extra entry. I didn't see who it was because it scrolled up while I was uh, doing all of that. Someone was asking about the Sunflowers products um, being able to purchase from the UK. You absolutely can purchase products from the UK, um, but we unfortunately have a $199 minimum just because of all of the changes that happened within um, the uh, within the industry. So the delivery guys just knocked on the door and my husband is not here yet. I need like a minute. I will be right back. Chat amongst yourselves. I'm super sorry about this, but I have to make sure they don't leave. So I will be right back. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that got me all flustered. So, um, all right. I'm just scrolling back to make sure 
I didn't miss anything. Okay, so I hope I answered the question about the sunflower seed. Honestly, I haven't even looked to see if it's still in stock. So um, I am unsure of that. Heather can probably check that. Um, but just so you know, we have those shipping minimums, order minimums when it comes to the UK. Hi, Patty from Minneapolis. That's where I am located as well. Okay. All right. Oh, my delivery. It is actually something fun. Um, it is a new uh, patio uh, table and fancy chairs. It's one of those patio tables that has like fire in the middle. Um, we have, uh, it's from a company called Yardbird that um, we got to do a, like a scratch and dent sell through my husband's employment. So we were pretty excited about that. So we got a really great deal. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I've gone over welcoming. I've gone over um, giving a thumbs up and the $15 gift card code. So we have plenty of people here. So let's go ahead and get the camera flipped around and let's get going on today's card. All right. Give me one second while I get this all switched around here. And it's always a tad bright. So we're going to do the adjustment there. Perfect. And I'm just going to wait for it to flip around on my phone to make sure all looks well. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right. And thank you, Heather, for checking on the sunflower stuff. I appreciate that. I didn't even think to check on it before going live. Okay, friends, today we are going to be using this new Spark of Goodness set. We're going to be using it a little bit differently, and I'm excited to share that with you today. But we're going to get going because we kind of have a lot to do. And I tend to be a little bit slower of a crafter. So you're going to get a nice good look at this whole set here as we go. So this is our focus for today. So let's go ahead. We're going to start with the stamp. Um, so I'm going to get my Misty all prepped. First things first, because it's a clean stamp, we want to remove our, uh, our, our foam pad from it. However, what I've noticed, because I'm a fairly light stamper, I get a little bit better stamp impression if I add a few additional sheets of just the misty paper into my misty. So um, if you are ever struggling with stamping with clean stamps, and maybe you are a light stamper like me, this helps me so much. So just a fun little tip for you for that. All right, so for the spark of goodness, I'm just going to start out by stamping that outline. So I'm gonna leave the pop out elements. So that little filigree and the two sentiments, I'm gonna leave those off because I don't need those right now. I don't need the filigree at all. I will stamp one of the sentiments later, um, but we are going to go with just the beautiful outline. So when I first saw this stamp set, it reminded me of like a fairy tale, like Sleeping Beauty, Beauty and the Beast. And the initial cards I made with it really reflected that. Uh, today, we're going to do things a little bit differently. So we're going to go a little crazy with the rainbow. So start off because I'm going to heat emboss this. We're going to start off by prepping our cardstock with some with a powder tool and that all this does if you're new to stamping or heat embossing all this powder tool does is it allows you to um it basically just makes it so that the embossing powder only sticks to what we want it to stick to and in that case it is our embossing ink so i am going to ink my stamp up with some slow drying kind of sticky embossing ink that is the property of the ink that allows you the time to get the embossing powder on there and get it heat set. It seems like we have a lot of people's orders who are making some fun trips around the country. Gotta love shipping these days. 
<laughs> I'm sure it'll arrive. It'll arrive at some point. All right. So I am a light stamper, as I've mentioned already. Um, and I also feel like when you add the powder tool to your paper, it really dries that paper out. And so it takes a couple of impressions to get a nice, good stamped impression, especially when you can't really see the ink as well. So great thing about having these fantastic stamping platforms that are at our, um, as a, as a fantastic resource. Um, it allows us to stamp multiple times. All right, let me take a look at that. All right, I think I've got a fairly decent impression there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to remove the magnets. And then we are going to do a little bit of heat embossing. And I'm pretty sure that my Cocker Spaniel just realized, one, that my husband got home, two, that there are some shenanigans going on outside. So we are going to see how long it takes her to become a little vocal about it. <laughs> so Sadie may be making her appearance here quickly. Okay, so there's half. I always like to clean up embossing powder halfway through to try to not make a huge mess. In the end, you always tend to make some type of mess with embossing powder, but you know. It still is such a magical, pretty thing that that's okay. She hasn't started barking yet. I'm surprised, but we'll see. I may speak too soon on that. All right, that looks fantastic. Let's go ahead and clean up before we heat set here. Okay. Uh, and just in case you were wondering that this is Brutus and Row embossing powder in gilded. It is my favorite gold embossing powder. All right, before I heat set, set this as well, I'm gonna just wipe my stamp down just to, so that I don't, that ink does not stick on there. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I knew she was gonna figure it out. <laughs> She's barking at delivery guys right now. All right, so I am going to go ahead and heat set this. So my sound might sound a little garbled and then Zoom will mute. And so it will be pretty quiet as you watch the image being heat set. All right, that is fully heat set. So let's see here. I think I, oh, Jan is asking, is there a difference between this embossing powder and other gold embossing powders? Uh, it melts and all of that just the same, Jan. I just happen to really like the shade of gold that this one is. It's kind of like that perfect gold but it's not like too metallic but it's not matte it's just like a nice it's so it's just my preference for the color of gold that it is so it's not really different in essence where you know you're really just it, it melts and and does the same as every other embossing powder in terms of properties i just happen to really love the shade of gold that it is okay so we are going to use the stencils later. 
but we're going to do something to this first. But be, before we do that, we need to trim it down to size and we need to cut out the middle. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Just grab my handy little paper trimmer here. So this is my paper trimmer that has the metal guide. I like this one for doing these because it allows me to see where all of the ends are on this. And so I like to leave a little bit of room at the bottom. And then I know I want this to fit edge to edge on an A2 sized card. So I need to cut it down to five and a half. And then this way, I just kind of make a judgment call. I'm probably, it's probably not perfect each time, but I just cut a little bit off of each side. Um, and just trim it down to four point two five. So then this will fit edge to edge on an A two size card. I will just set those aside and throw them into my scraps. All right. So we have our panel trimmed down first. So go ahead and put that away. Now we are going to. I cut out the middle. So the die set includes a die to cut out the middle. And it also includes a die to cut out that little filigree piece, which I didn't, I'm not using today. So we're just gonna use the die that cuts around the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and get my cutting plate out. Oh, Making some noise here. Get my die cut machine ready. And so we're gonna line up the die pretty easy to line up friends, but just take some time because there's a, quite a few areas where um, you gotta line up quite a few areas. So just, I like to take a little bit of extra time to make sure I have lined it up nice and nice and good. So I like to tape to the inside because just in case, you know, sometimes your low tack tape sometimes still sticks very rather, rather well. And so rather than have that happening to a piece that I want to be shown on my card, I like to stick to the inside. So if it does happen to pull up some cardstock, that is okay. Um, it, uh, cause I can just recycle that piece if it, but you know, rather than having to redo my stamping and all of that. Hi Kim, glad you found us today. Betty St. Clair, you asked me which embossing tool I'm using. I'm, I'm assuming you mean my heat gun. That is the WOW dual heat, dual mode or something like that heat gun. Um, it has two heat settings, high and I don't know, like a low or a medium. I don't use the, the lower one very often, but it does come in handy if you're wanting to um, uh, dry like a watercolor uh, piece. Lori is asking me how long the blade lasts in my Fiskars. Lori, I don't use that cutting, I don't use that um, paper trimmer super often. It's pretty much used for cutting out sentiments, intricate sentiments and things like this when I need to be able to see that guide. I would say it probably lasts me about five to six months, um, maybe a little longer if I am not using it as often. Okay. So this is where we're going to start doing something a little bit different. So we are going to use a couple of the layering stencils, but not right away. So we are actually going to start by just ink blending around this lovely piece in a rainbow gradient. So I've got my thing here because I'm going to have to end up wiping a lot. So I'm going to start out with Sparkling Rose and Very Licious. Um, and what we're going to do is I have this little piece of tape here that I'm just going to use to have my fingers on as I start to get ink in more places, but we're going to start with sparkling rose down here in the lower left corner. Oh, thanks, Darlene. Appreciate that. 
Oh, Betty was asking the powder that I used on the card before embossing. This is just a powder tool. Uh, Honest truth, I got it just at like a local Michaels, but there are tons of options out there for that. It's just like a little bag of powder to help with sticking of the embossing powder. Okay, so I'm gonna start with sparkling rose. I'm gonna hold on to that little flower so it doesn't get all wily on me here. And we are gonna just start ink blending all the way around my card here. Oh, so Lori, if you cut everything with that trimmer, you will probably go through those blades quite a bit more often, to be honest. It's like the only um, somewhat downfall, I guess, of that trimmer is that those blades just don't last forever and they're not self-sharpening. So um, I think you probably will go through them a little bit quicker than me. All right, so I am not going to remove any ink from my blending tool yet. Um, and I'm not gonna remove the ink pad yet because it's possible I may need to do a little bit of additional blending to blend out any uh, lines that may occur as I am uh, ink blending these two together. So I always like to keep a little bit of excess ink in my brush. I can fade out lines like this one right here that was made. And I didn't even need to get any more ink, just a little bit of leftover ink in my brush faded that out perfectly. Okay. So we're gonna leave Berry Licious. We can put away Sparkling Rose. We are going to go in and we're going to start next with Clementine. I'm just gonna set my red brush aside. You're gonna see me wiping my desk down a lot because I don't wanna accidentally uh, intermix my ink colors here. So I'm gonna be wiping my desk down quite a bit. And I just put a little bit of piece of tape over the already ink blended areas to avoid my getting any fingertips into my ink blending as it dries and seeps into the um, uh, cardstock. Okay. Oh, thank you, Sharon. I appreciate that. All right. So let's get that. And then I'm going to just take my red and I'm just going to blend over that area where the two colors meet each other, just to soften out that line a little bit. I think I got the idea for this card from Laura Basson. So when we released the arch backdrop, which I believe was in um, January, she did this thing where she foiled it and then she ink blended it in rainbows. And so I thought that this would be a really fun idea with this um, set. Okay, so now next we're gonna start with sunshine here. Blend it over into the orange. Oop, let's do that so I don't get any fingerprints. And blend it down a little bit into this flower. So these flowers, these little flowers kind of hang on just barely, you know, by a small little thread there. So when I'm blending, I do try to kind of hold them in place so I don't run the risk of tearing them off. Oh, thanks, Audrey. I appreciate that. Ooh, careful, Leah. All right, so then I'm gonna use my orange blender, just kind of blend back in. are done with orange for now anyway. Let's go ahead and grab grassy knoll. Oh, I'm happy to hear that, Erica. That's fantastic. I'm glad you're loving this set. Okay. 
All right, now we're gonna do grassy knoll for our green. in here. This is where it gets a little more tricky. Just grab another piece of tape. Little edge of this flower here. Okay. All right. Well, I think we escaped the delivery without too much chaos. <laughs> Sadie seems to be calmed down and I think they're finished. So I think we're good to go for the rest of the thing. Thank you guys for bearing with that. Um, wow, everything was going on. All right, so then I'm gonna take my yellow. I'm just going to blend in that area where the yellow meets the green, just to soften that out a little. We are to our final color here. And that, of course, is aquamarine. I think I missed something. You know, Sherrod, I have thought about that, but honestly, the reason why I'm doing this this way is exactly what Heather pointed, is I wanted there to be heavy, heavier ink blending. Um, in the areas where like your brush hits up against the side of the paper, just to give it more added detail. So I think that I'm okay with holding down those little flower bits just to be able to get that little added dimension added that happens when you um, are able to ink blend directly after it's been die cut. We're just creating a tiny little bit of purple. Oh, I just realized I'm totally ink blending off camera. Sorry about that. So this will just create a little tiny bit of purple in here where the aquamarine overlaps the pink. I think it's probably good. Let's grab this and fade it out real quick. I am gonna put aside grassy knoll and aquamarine. I'm gonna grab that sparkling rose real quick. We're going to just add a little bit more sparkling rose over here in this aqua side just to get, create a little bit more purple. I didn't do a purple layer for this, but I do like that I get a little bit of purple just down there in the bottom when you combine those two colors. Okay, so we are not done ink blending yet, but look at how fun that looks so far. I'm just going to clean my brushes off real quick. Oh, thank you, Audrey, I appreciate that. See, we're having a very uh, <laughs> lengthy discussion about paper trimmers. <laughs> I guess that makes sense when you're just watching the ink blend. So I'm just lightly brushing over this. This just kind of gets a little excess ink off of the uh, gold heat embossing. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's, wipe our desk down and we're going to go ahead and tape this panel down as well. Okay, I need this to be more on camera for you guys. Oh, these these ink pad holders are not on our site, but if you just google the ink stand, um they're from our uh, friends over at the ink stand. They're lovely. They're fantastic for um, holding your ink pads like this. We love them. Okay, so we are going to grab some, some stencils from the Spark of Goodness set. We are going to, however, so I changed the stencil order on this set anyway. So we're going to grab just the flowers. So the flower stencils are stencil two and stencil four, which you probably can't see in the video. Um, but we're basically grab, grabbing, pardon me, the flower layers, and we're going to use those to just uh, basically accentuate the rainbow details that we already have. It's not very sticky anymore. So I'm going to grab a couple pieces of washi tape. And this is going to be pretty subtle. Oh, there she goes again. Apparently she's barking at someone out the window. Um, 
but this is going to be fairly subtle, but I promise you it makes a really nice difference in your cards when you add the extra layers on them. Okay, so we're gonna stick with the same colors actually, but we're going to move over to small brushes. Now you don't have to use small brushes if you don't have them. I do find it a tad bit easier to do the this with the smaller brushes, but you, you absolutely can use them with the larger ones. You may have to do a little masking or just be really careful, but we're going to ink blend in these additional details. Okay, so there is our start here. All right, let's move on to Berrylicious and get those red details blended in. And you will notice that sometimes where I have a couple colors that overlap each other, I'm going to use both colors to continue that overlapping. Jan, my glass mat is a 16 by 22 glass mat from We Are Memory Keepers. I think you can find it in quite a few different places for purchase. Okay, so that was Sparkling Rose and Berrylicious. Next, we've got Clementine and Sunshine. And also just for reference in case, uh, cause I know we're going a little quick. I have a, you know, a bit of ink blending to do and then we got to assemble the cards. So I want to make sure we get to everything. All of the products are linked in the video description. So all of these ink colors are linked there. Um, so everything that you would need if you wanted to recreate this. All right, so there is Clementine. And then let's move on to sunshine. Okay. I do also really like how I get a little bit more precision with the smaller brushes. I can kind of um, create a little bit darker areas uh, and then fade it out a little bit easier when you're doing these very small details. Okay, so then we are on to our final two colors for this stencil, which are Grassy Knoll and Mermaid Cove, or excuse me, not Mermaid Cove, Marie, and use Mermaid Cove next. Sarah, I'm glad you're enjoying the stencils. Cleaned off there. So up next, Grassy Knoll. And these ones I am trying because it's the same color as what's underneath. I am being a little bit heavier handed with them because I do want to see a little bit of a difference even if it's just subtle. <laughs> um, Erica, my desk actually is pretty neat right now. Um, I've done a bit of cleaning. I did a bit of cleaning this morning before work. Um, just because it's been a little bit of a disaster area around here because I've just had stuff kind of piled everywhere. But it is actually pretty clean right now. I do have about a million ink pads on my desk right now, however. All right, so then let's just get a little bit more of that. Aquam green. Okay, so pencil number two is complete. Now, we could leave it here. We could, this could be where we end it and it would be lovely. I love those additional details. However, I'm gonna take it a step further and we are gonna do the second layer of flower details. So the best way that I have found to line this one up is to line up this flower right here and then just kind of guide yourself and then line up where these little divots in these top flowers are. And that pretty much gets all of those details lined up and at least they're within the uh, petal or flower that they're supposed to be in. All right, so we're going up a couple colors in some of these. So for pinks, we're going up to Raspberry Bliss. 
for reds, we're just going up one to candy apple. And these are pretty small details. So I'm going to be pretty heavy handed with them. Sorry about my little girl. She's barky apparently now that she's aware. <laughs> we'll just have to deal with her a little bit. Ruth, I agree. Um, layering stencils have been life-changing for me too. I am not bad at coloring, but I'm very slow at it. And I love that this makes me a little bit more efficient. I can get things done quicker. And um, it looks like I spent hours upon hours when I did used to spend hours upon hours trying to color myself. All right, so this was candy apple. It's pretty deep red. I'm just using a dry cloth after each round to wipe the stencil down so I don't get excess ink on my hand or accidentally blend it into an area where I don't want it. <laughs> right? Sadie wants her own craft, her own live stream for crafting. Okay, so we're gonna go up to persimmon and sweet mustard for the next details. Yes, exactly, Lori. She's just saying hi to everyone. She wants everyone to know she's here. Okay. And we're going to kind of just get the tippy top of that flower that's both orange and red. Okay. So these ones will always go a little bit quicker because there's just not as much area to cover in them. And then sweet mustard for yellow. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us, Kim. Glad you were able to make it. Of course, it will be available for replay uh, if you want to catch the rest of it later. Okay. So we have just our final two colors. And then we are done with the ink blending. So, so the final two colors are Key Lime and Mermaid Cove. Will my this set does not will not have a hot foil plate. So pretty much now you can expect now if the image can be converted to a hot foil plate, we will create one. So we're not going to be doing any more where we don't release it at the same time. So um, if it has a hot foil plate, then um, you'll know that we were able to create a hot foil plate out of it. If it doesn't have a hot foil plate, then that means we were, the image just wasn't conducive to a hot foil um, plate. Uh, Alana, this is dry. It's just a dry cloth, a dry uh, lint-free cloth to um, help me um, wipe the stencil down so that I don't get ink everywhere. So after we're done, after show, after I end this live stream, I will take these two stencils that I blended on and I will spritz each one with a couple spritzes of just normal like rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol that you get at the pharmacy. And um, I and then just wipe them down with this same dry cloth and that will get all of the excess residue off of them and then they'll be good to go and they dry immediately. Okay, we can put some stuff away here and let's go ahead and see the big reveal here. So I just love the little bit of added detail. Let me get these tape off the back here. That happens when you use those layering stencils in the same colors, you just get some nice, really lovely added details to your card. All right, so there we have this. So I wanted to show you guys something. I did a test run with white. Um, so I wanted to show you how pretty it is on white. So I chose to go with gold for today's live because I knew that when we were embossing the white, 
and everything, it wouldn't show up very well on video. And I, I didn't want that. To, I wanted you guys to be able to see. So I chose to use gold for the video today, but I wanted to show you how pretty it looks um, in white as well. So I'll end up making another card. I'll probably make another card after the live is over. And when I post them, I'll post them together so you can see the difference between the two. But I just want to show you, if you want to do this in white, it is stunning as well. It just wouldn't have showed up very well on camera. Um, Christine, yes, our stencils are all numbered here. These ones are kind of dirty, but so they're all numbered in the upper left corner. You probably won't be able to see it because they're etched. And then we have alignment guides in each corner. And that's for when you're wanting to use them alone. When you're using them with a stamp or a foiled image, you just line them up to that image. So they're all numbered. However, I tend to put them in the order of my preference. So you'll notice So today I used two stencil two and stencil four. And that is the way that I actually have them arranged. So I have stencil one and three together and then stencil two and four together because it's greenery, both parts, flowers, both parts. So yes, they are numbered and then they have alignment guides in the corner as well. All right, so I am gonna still use my gold piece today. I'll make a card later on with the white so you can see it as well, but we're gonna continue on with the gold today. So first things first, I need to probably figure out what I'm going to, uh, how I'm going to do my sentiment. So. I know that I'm just gonna, I'm, this is going to pop up with just off of a white card base here. So much color that white seems to be the best bet to me. And I'm also, I have pre-cut a die cut word. I pre-cut the word friend. This is from our phrase builder, hello die set. This is, I think, a seven word die set. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. It's a seven word die set. It's a 14 piece because each word also comes with the shadow layer. We have an entire selection of phrase, phrase builder sets. This one is hello. So the words you get are hello, handsome, beautiful, lovely, bestie, friend, and gorgeous. So for my card today, I have cut the word friend. I've cut both the scripted word and the shadow layer from vellum. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use both. That's why I, I collected them in this little tin here um, so that I can make a decision on that. I also know that I want to stamp one of the sentiments from the spark of goodness set to go with it. I'm going to do the you're a spark of goodness that brightens the world. I thought that was really nice for a friend card. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm actually going to stamp it directly to my card base using this as a guide. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Misty real quick. And I'm gonna pull this off because I don't need it anymore. Let's go ahead and just put it away. All right. And then I'm going to put my card base and then this over top. And then we will just, oops, and I realize I'm doing that off camera. Sorry about that. So our first virtual event is the upcoming in May. Um, registration has already happened for that. Sometimes we open registration again for a second time for a very small period of time, but we haven't decided if we're going to do that yet. So, um, but we'll have more. I think we'll have a couple more this year as well. Um, I don't know that we, um, we don't do expos typically. We don't, that doesn't mean that there won't be a store there that doesn't sell, that sells our product. So if there's a store there that sells your pro, our product, then you'll see it, but we don't typically do expos. All 
All right, let me make sure that's nice and lined up. Looks like it is. Okay, so I'm gonna remove this piece because I don't need it to be on here when I'm stamping. And I think for this sentiment, I'm just gonna use black because I've got that scripted, scripted sentiment that's already gold. So I'm just gonna use some detail black. And you all, if you guys ever catch me and Heather, we say this all the time. We like to just barely kiss the surface of our sentiments because they can be very dainty and very tiny. We just like to barely kiss the sentiment, give it a very small push, and we'll just ink it up one more time to get that nice black impression. But we don't want to smush too much ink on there. And we also don't want to push it too hard because then you run the risk of changing that sentiment, changing the integrity of it, making it look not as crisp and not as dainty. So we are big fans of the double stamp when it comes to sentiments like this. Yes, I think somebody, Bobby, maybe just um, mentioned about us having closed captioning. Um, yeah, we found that actually the other day, you know, for a while we didn't see it. We always thought it just automatically happened, but then we found it the other day to make sure we could turn it on. So we're glad that we can make sure that um, closed captioning is on from now on. This was, that was just a little bit of stamp cleaner, friends. I'm just trying to get the excess detail black off my sentiment here. Okay, so we can put that away. Our card base. I feel like I have black ink on my fingers. So give me a minute because I don't want to smudge any of the card. Okay, there we go. All right, so we are done. We are done stamping so we can put our stamping platform away. All right, I guess we're to the point where we're just time to start assembling. So you know us at all, you know we're gonna put a whole bunch of foam tape on the back. Oh, look at all of the ink that got on the back there. It's funny. Okay, so this is a little bit of an oddly shaped. So I'm gonna have to kind of do larger chunks at first and then trim down some thin, thinner pieces. So we're gonna be doing foam adhesive for a little bit on this card. So we can probably just chat a little. While we do this. Oh, thank you, Bobby. That's very nice of you. Okay, so let's see here. I need mean, oh, probably about there. My goodness, my dog is just super barky. I'm glad you guys don't mind <laughs> for making her, her presence known in my lives. All right. There's that. This would be a really fun shaker card. I, I'm not really prepared to do a shaker card today. Maybe I'll turn that white one into a shaker card and you can see it on when I post to my Instagram and my blog. Um, but I do think that this set would make a really, really fun, I think this is still too thick, a really super fun shaker. Should be using my nonstick scissors, I'm being dumb. Okay. Let's see here. All right, so we're gonna just get a little bit of extra foam tape on these little flower pieces so that they stay nice and dimensional here. Okay. I think we have plenty. I'll just save that for later. And then this is going to go over top like that. That is. Okay. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate your kindness about my little puppy. No, oh, she's not a puppy. She's actually very old, but sometimes she still acts like a puppy. 
<laughs> My husband left and he went for a run and I think she's a little annoyed that he didn't take her with him. So that doesn't help. Yeah, I'm yeah, I love foam tape, Bobby. If you think I love foam tape though, you should see Heather. <laughs> Sorry, Heather. <laughs> she really loves her foam tape. All right. This is always like kind of the trickiest part is getting this. I always like to do it this way. There we go. I think this will I'll have more control this way. Get these two edges lined up. There we go. Okay, so there's that. So let's go ahead and here I have to decide if I want to use the vellum. And I think I do. I just like that it gives it that nice little very subtle shadow. So let's go ahead and get those two pieces adhered together. Oh yeah, I totally go to the school of Laura Basson. To mention his life, friends. Um, so I mentioned I pre-cut this, so you guys won't have to watch me painstakingly cut multiple layers and glue every single stacked layer together. So this is tonic gold pearl paper, and then I think either two or three um, layers of just normal white cardstock that I've stacked together to make a little bit thicker, so it will pop off when the vellum shadow a little bit better and also just will give some added dimension to the card as well. Okay, and I just got glue everywhere, but thankfully, um, barely arts dries clear, so not a big deal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love how Heather said, yeah, she could have put more, <laughs> basically, is what she's telling me. Okay, so we got to add the tittle to it. I've got them in this little thingy. You can see them. They're probably hard to see, but I can see them. And so I have found that if you use a jewel picker to grab your tittle, it makes it easier to, to adhere. Um, so then... I'm gonna get that second layer, the one that has the gold. And there you have a layered tittle. And so I find that to be the easiest way to do those tiny little uh, dots, you know, tittles, they're, they're, that's their technical term is tittles. Um, you know, the dots, dotting the I, if you have a period or anything in your sentence or sentiment. Okay, yes, this is from the Phrase Builder Hello die set. It is linked in the video description. Um, and it's a fun one. It's been around for a while. Um, but it's a very, it's a really, it's a really fun set. Okay, so we are going to just layer this guy here. So I'm going to just add a little liquid glue. I am going to add a couple of very thin pieces of foam over here, just so it pops a little bit off. And of course, I've got to grab my thin foam strip. So give me just one second. I had forgotten I had used the last one on a card I created not too long ago. So I had forgotten to grab another set out here. So, Let's go ahead and throw a little bit on the D. Find my precision scissors here. Okay, a little on the D, a little on the N, maybe the I, and that'll probably be sufficient. These shouldn't show through too much in the background. All right, yeah, no, they're good. Okay, so then we are also going to add just a little bit of liquid glue on the F so it will stick to the side of the card. So go ahead and just dot a little bit on there. 
if this seeps through a little bit, not a big deal because it dries clear. So, um, I, that's what I love about Barely Earth's glue is you can make a mess of it and it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, the vellum, I, I tend to prefer vellum shadows just because it's real subtle. Um, and, but it gives you, it really helps bring whatever it is, whether it's a word die or a sentiment. Um, it's one of my favorite ways to really bring it to life. So I did not link these up because I wasn't actually sure what I was going to use today. So I will be sure to update my description, but I think I'm going to use the crystals today for embellishing. Um, Maureen, I think you're asking what kind of glue I used. It's this Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue. Uh, no, um, so in the winter time, Mom Snoozy, it, uh, it would clog on me a little bit because of the cold weather. I actually have heard that, but for the most part, I have never had it clog other than just, I think it just gets a little bound up because it's, it sits right next to a window. Um, and so, and I gets really cold here in Minnesota. So I think mine is more of a weather issue because I don't have any problems with it um, outside of really cold winter days. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna do some clear crystals for sure. I was thinking maybe a little pink. And maybe no red seems a little much. Maybe yellow. Yeah. Audrey, I believe I used three layers now that I'm looking at it. There's one layer of the gold pearl, and then two layers of white cardstock that I just stacked together with that same liquid glue that I've been using. And then of course there's the vellum shadow layer that I added. Jan, I do leave the pin in it when it's not in use. Fun fact, I found that you can actually buy just the pins um, from directly from Barely Arts, because I tend to bend these a lot and you can't just use a standard pin because those rust so i found that you can actually just buy a pack of pins directly from barely arts so i bought those the other day um i think i'm running very low on the bigger crystals but i think i have some yellow oh i do like that yellow a lot maybe yellow and a pink and a clear And then maybe, actually I wonder, hmm. this is where I always get to be a little bit finicky and I always start wondering, making and like second guessing, well, I may stick with yellow because I may not have any big orange crystals. So I think we're just gonna stick with the yellow up there anyway. However, I may switch out the pink with orange. Let me see what I think. Nah, I like the pink there. Okay. So there's that. And then I think I'm just gonna do two down here in this little corner. So I think we're gonna just stick with the pink and the clear um, to kind of coordinate with those, look at that. All right, so the crystals, we get this, we get asked a lot about this. Um, the crystals, the difference between the crystals and the jewels is that our crystals are actually diamond shaped. I don't know that this will show up very well. Um, so they have like a pointy edge to them. So I always, when I'm using them on a card like this, I'm just, the pointy edge is sticking up. The flatter top is sticking down to the bottom. 
And if you were to mail these in an envelope, I would probably put a little piece of tissue paper or mail them in a padded envelope. Okay, let's stick these down. Ooh, oopsies. All right, there we have it. That is my card for today. Yes, they are faceted, Kathy. So there is our simple card for today. I'm excited to make a version with the white embossing as well. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around and um, let Heather pick a winner of today's $15 gift card code. I'm, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, Vicky's asking the difference between Barely Arts and Art Glitter Glue. I have no idea. I've never used Art Glitter Glue. So unfortunately I can't, um, I can't really tell you the difference between those. All right, thank you guys. I appreciate you for joining me today. Once again, all of the products are linked in the video description. If you find that you just can't live without um, any of the products I used today. So we used Spark of Goodness um, mainly, and then our phrase builder, hello, what I said. Krista, we make the bling. So that's our essentials crystals mix. All right, it looks like congratulations to Wendy. Goundry, you've won today's $15 gift card code. So congratulations. All you have to do to email, or excuse me, to claim your prize is email me. My email is leah at pinkfirststudio.com. There's no H on the end of my name. So it's just lea at pinkfirststudio.com. And give me, pardon me, give me about two to three days to reply. So congratulations. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, we will have a live this week on Facebook with Heather. We should anyway, unless, you know, sometimes plans change at the very last minute, but it is our tentative plans that we will have Facebook live at 12 p.m. Central time on Thursday. No idea what Heather plans on using yet, so I'm sure it will be wonderful. So thank you for joining us. Um, keep in mind, we are starting sneak peeks this week. We actually sneak peeked a new product yesterday on our Instagram yesterday afternoon. Uh, we won't be sneak peeking anything today, but we likely will be tomorrow. So for the next two weeks, we're going to be sneak peeking our March release. So definitely be sure to check those out. All right, friends, that's everything I have for you today. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Bye.